Hello and welcome to today's presentation about impedance matching to coils. I came to pass always across the issue when I read about power transfer between coils that I never noticed means to apply impedance matching. This is specifically the case in the alternative energy scene. Whereas in radio engineering it is always applied and talked about it. The problems you occur when you do not care is threefold. First, you get reflection to your source power and destroy it. Second, you heat up wires at standing waves along the transmission line and burn through it. And third, you get false reading for your power efficiency. How can we avoid that? We need first to understand what impedance magic is. Let us start simple with investigating it. First, we use a signal generator with a perfect voltage source and an impedance of 50 ohm. This statement should remind you that 50 ohm non-inductive resistance is added in series to the voltage source. From Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law, we know that power is a product of voltage times current. Kirchhoff's law shows us a voltage drop across a resistor in a circuit. Here the resistance is real because it does not change in frequency. I use an online calculator to demonstrate. So here on this on online calculator I can um, add the values we're gonna use for our demonstration. So I'm adding 5 volts, that 5 volt will be our peak to peak value. And then the resistance is 50 ohm. So if I calculate that, I get 100 milliampere as current available and I get half a watt. This, however, applies only if you match the impedance. So what does that mean? If we now connect this voltage source to a load with 0 0.1 ohm, voltage will drop and current will rise. Now I add a large resistance of 1 kilo ohm. In parallel, voltage will rise to twice the 10 volt to 10 volt and current will be low. In both cases, we are not able to deliver half a watt or 0.5 or 500 milliwatt, which makes our system inefficient. More important, our energy efficiency reading are wrong because the voltage source still needs to consume the power to deliver into 50 ohm. Marking it a great loss, 50 ohm has been established for the best handling of voltage and current delivery of RF, RF technologies since the early 20th centuries. Let me give you a demonstration now about what I just said. So here on the demonstration table, you see currently four probes, two current probes from Tektronics P6021 and P6020. And then we have two voltage probes and very important, they need to be low voltage probes um, one time or 10 times, one or 10 times. They need to be low in order to show the voltage accurately at this low level. Otherwise, if you take a high voltage probe, you get again false readings. So the frequency is set to 2 megahertz. And I have currently, as you can see, the little blue device on this one current probe, the 621 here on the right side, is a, a trimmer, which has a potentiometer, which a potentiometer which has been fine adjusted to the impedance of the signal pulse generator. And I had to use this one actually to uh, bypass the problems which I had from fixed value resistors, which did not ideally match what I had available as resistance or impedance, which has been applied to the signal generator. But here we can do this very easy. So what, what I want to demonstrate to you now is here first, I show you the ideal way when we match the impedance, then I show you a short circuit one for low impedance, and I show you a high um, resistance one for the opposite side. So the first demonstration is with the parallel resistor to match the 50 ohm resistance from the potentiometer here, just to show if maybe you haven't seen it. So that's the one here. And I will start now the signal generator for sine wave. 
these are the values we can read and what we expect here we want to see 5 volt and around 100 milliampere that is correct that is a value we should see however bear in mind that is a non-inductive load so now I'll show you what happens if we have a short circuit. Let's assume you connect it to the primary of a Tesla coil, which has probably 0.1 or 0.01, depending on what kind of wire you use, or if you use copper tubing, you have really, really low resistance. That would mean technically a short circuit. Let me put that as a short circuit, even with there's a little bit of resistance, I put that in here now. So a short circuit now, see what happens on the oscilloscope. So I'm going down to 2 volt and here we have 185 milliampere. But what you should notice right away is if you multiply these two values, you will not achieve your half a watt anymore, right? So the opposite side is now if you add a 1k resistor, just give me a second. I have now adapted and changed the potentiometer to the full value of 1k. 1 kilo ohm, and I will demonstrate to you how that looks like now on the oscilloscope. Let me energize. Here you go, we have the full value which we would see. So that happens if you connect your oscilloscope probe across a 50 ohm output, 5, uh, 5 volt peak to peak, you, you will read 10 volt. That is absolute normal value and that sometimes confuses people. Why do I read 10 volt? I set up only f f 5 volt peak to peak. I should see 5 volt. You see that only if you match correctly to the 50 ohm. But here it's not matched. We use 1 kilo ohm for a high resistive coil or for a large coil we connect directly. And that's what we're going to get. So I'm going to show you now what we're going to do. We have a coil. I have a primary here like this primary for the secondary which is a pancake coil which I use for my experiments for the wireless energy transfer and this coil I have already measured I show you the calculation now in a second where we um, add the calculation for this coil um, to get the values for the um, impedance we require for the 2 megahertz. So here is the page we're going to use for our calculation of the network we have to apply in order to um, uh, determine the correct impedance we have to match to from our signal source. So we are changing at first, we are deciding what matchback we are using. I decided I want to use the Pi network. The Pi match, it's defined in here. The frequency we stated as 2 megahertz. Serious resistance is 50 ohm because um, it's a non-inductive load, so we have zero reactance. That's very important from the source. But the load resistance, RL, is the DC resistance of the coil. It's 0.1 ohm. And the load reactance is the one we just calculated is 138 ohm dot 16. And these are the values here on the bottom for which I have to apply now um, a network. And here it shows you nicely the graph how that is panning out and how we get the great match then exactly at this specific uh, uh, resistance. So next I will build now this um, network and I will connect it to the coil and we're going to do another measurement and fingers crossed everything will work fine and we will measure our 5 ohm and we can measure our 100 milliampere. I did build now the Pi network and have added it um, uh, together with um, a resistance uh, in parallel to it. Um, however, the values I had to use or I, I could manage to get are not exactly what I supposed to have. That means I would probably not have exactly the value of 5 volt um, and so on. That means it slightly changes. So I have the current clamp both currently on the input side. That means on the side where the um, 
signal generator is, and then, but the voltage I have already on, the, on the coil, and I will move this current clamp then also later on to the coil to see if you have any difference. So technically there should not be any difference, but because it's a coil, magnetic flux will increase. There will be a difference in in the in the flux in the magnetic flux. So let's have a look. I will energize now. So we see we have 5.4 volt, and I have 90 close to 100 yeah milliampere on both sides. That is what is expected. So I'm actually quite satisfied with the way both work. Now, if I now manage to move this current clamp to the coil, then we have something different, like that. So we have a three times, four times higher value of current on the coil side then we have it on the output side. So the output side is directly on the current, which is coming from the amplifier. However, the, cur the coil is amplifying magnetic flux, especially a spiral coil. So it's something not to mention, but that's a different subject. Our subject was today to find a way to do impedance match, which we have done here. So the next uh, position would then be to add then the additional coil we have the secondary coil, and that will make a difference. So if I just move this coil here on top, it has an impact, but if you change now the frequency a little bit, so that would be out of the range we're having, but see what happens, in, that is not the resonance frequency of this coil. But if you go in the frequency up, we change the values, but you can see that the voltage stay quite nice, but we go down to the values we call lower and lower, but that was, the adjusted um, network matching for 2 megahertz, and that's where it currently is. And uh, at the moment at 8.8 .8 megahertz, if, as you can see. And that's interesting to note. So the reference fre frequency is something you have to adjust for correctly for the resonance system. And for this frequency, you have to configure the network for your driving coil. So that is, in summary, what I would like to present to you today. Thank you very much. And join me on my website when I'm going to put that all now into use for our wireless scalar uh, wave frequency project. Bye-bye.